I'm not sure. It doesn't it, like I said, I don't remember, but it, it I mean the 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 logic here kind of doesn't add up for me. I understand that when you were serving as, or as you've been serving as an MP, you have had communications with consular officials from a variety of countries, including from the People's Republic of China. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And when we interviewed you, we talked about your conversations um, with the PRC Consul General, uh, specifically about um, the two Michaels, Yes. Michael Spavor or Michael Kovrig? Kovrig? That's right. Okay. I'm going to take you to another topical summary. This one is titled Intelligence Relating to Handong and Communication with People's Republic of China Officials Regarding the Two Michaels. And I'm going to, of course, uh, make the same caveats as before. This is a summary of Government of Canada intelligence holdings. There's an entire page of qualifications. And uh, I should perhaps uh, note that one of those is that the document does not indicate whether the information being described was translated from another language. Uh, I'm, again, not suggesting that uh, what's written here is true or is a proven fact. And the purpose of what I'm about to ask you is just to get your first-hand information um, on uh, the subjects uh, discussed. Now, before we go any further, I just want to make sure everyone is clear. Hondong's lawsuit against Global News is related to what they reported based on the two Michaels. Breaking news from Ottawa now. The MP at the center of the election interference allegations, Hang Dong, left the Liberal caucus to sit as an independent. We've now got some new information to tell you about him. CTV's Glenn McGregor is at the Bureau. He's joining us now with the details. Glenn, what are you learning? Yeah, Marcia Han Dong's tweeting out a statement today, uh, this morning, saying that he intends to sue Global Television. That is the network that first reported this allegation against Dong that he allegedly, and we don't have any confirmation of this ourselves, but he allegedly communicated with the Chinese consulate in Toronto, told the consul general that uh, releasing the two Michaels would have helped the Conservatives back in, this is back in uh, February of 2021, when they're about two years into what was uh, ultimately a thousand days they s spent in prison. A very damaging allegation against him uh, uh, triggered his uh, resignation from the Liberal caucus to sit as an independent, but he maintained at the time that it was absolutely a false allegation. Okay, they reported that Han Dong met with officials at the consulate, at the Chinese consulate, and suggested to them that it would be in the Liberals' best interest if they delayed the release of the two Michaels. The whole lawsuit is, is, is based on Han Dong saying, all of that is completely false. There's nothing, nothing true about that. Keep that in mind. Um, my first question for you is, uh, when you spoke to the Consul General for China about the two Michaels, what language were you speaking in? Um, Mandarin. Mandarin? Yeah, uh, mostly Mandarin. All right. So if we can flip to the second page, you'll see there are six points here. And what I'm going to ask you is essentially whether there is any correspondence between what's written in this document and any conversations you had with the Consul General about the two Michaels. Okay? Okay. Okay, so remember in the previous document, Han Dong didn't refute anything that the gentleman's asking him about. This is important because remember, Michael Johnston and everybody else was ramming down our throats that 
this, you know, the intelligence is false and you, you can't take it by itself, etc. It's all these talking points. So with every confirmation, it validates what has been reported before from the whistleblowers. Does that make sense? Make sense to you, Fox? Makes sense to me. Okay. Hope everyone's keeping score. We're at, I believe it's it's two two for two. I think so. So point number one says in early 2021, Han Dong, henceforth Dong, MP for Don Valley North, expressed views in private on a range of topics, including the state of PRC Canada, the PRC Canada relationship. Is there any correspondence between that and your conversations with the Consul General? I don't, I don't recall that conversation, uh, but after the uh, news article came out, uh, confirmed with my office that it was likely that we had a conversation uh, in, you know, early 2021. Okay. Are, you, are you able to say one way or another whether that conversation might have included discussions about the state of the PRC Canada relationship? It's possible. I don't remember, but it's possible. Okay. Okay. Non-refuted. So we're not, we're not keeping score as in, you know, this is, you know, uh, intelligence um, artifact one through six as it's laid out here. We're going by statements because each of these is an individual statement of intelligence, even, you know, multiple statements are within one artifact. So with every validation, it's important. So he just said, I don't recall it, but my office says that I did. So yeah, I guess I, I, I had a conversation with him and it's possible, it's possible that it was probably about, you know, PRC Canada relationship. So he's not refuting it. He's not really admitting it, but he's not really refuting it either. Right. He's saying it's, it's, it's reasonable that that's what we talked about. Here's my question. Did you have that many conversations with him that you don't remember? Because to me, like Hondong is a backbencher, everybody. Yeah, that's right. He was only elected in 2019. Not a cabinet member. No. Why are you going and talking to, uh, to the Chinese consulate? That was, that was a question that was actually raised back when this came up or, or originally. And the media was asking that question. Like, why are you talking to them about this? Well, it's, I would imagine it's not very common for MPs to be speaking with any consulate. Right. It's usually going to be your, your ambassadors, your diplomatic corps, your, you know, cabinet ministers of foreign relations, those guys. Yeah. So anyhow, let's continue. So that's now three for three. The next sentence is, Dong made it clear he was not speaking on behalf of the government of Canada, but sharing his personal views on the matter. Do you recall, or could that have been something that you said in this? It in could. Office? Okay. Four for four. Point two, Mr. Dong's comments focused primarily on the House of Commons Uyghur genocide in Xinjiang motion. Again, it's it's possible i don't i don't recall specific but uh, it's possible okay oh you mean the motion that he abstained from voting on that's the one hmm five for five folks and and for for those of you following along for those that are saying well he, you know he's not saying that that it did happen so what what's what's the big deal the big deal is he's launched a lawsuit against Global News. And he's saying that the intelligence that they've received and what they reported on is utterly false, which is why he's suing them. Right. So if it was false, instead of, oh, yeah, maybe that could have happened, it would have been like, no, that definitely didn't happen. I know right. that didn't happen. That's why I'm suing Global News. Bingo. The two Michaels, Michael Kovred, Kovrig and Michael Spavor were also raised in the broader context of Sino-Canada relations. I, I always bring up uh, uh, advocate for early release of it to Michael's, so it's possible. Okay. So, and I'm sorry, you just said that you, you always bring up the two Michaels? I always advocate for early release and improve out their conditions, so it's possible. Okay. Okay. 
Five for five. I have a feeling that's important, though, that I always advocate for them. Like, that that just, that, that sentence is sticking out in my mind. And do you recall if that would have been the subject of any of your conversations with the Consul General? Um, yes. Yes, it would have been? Yeah. It would have been. Okay. Number three, on the two Michaels, MP Dong emphasized that the Canadian public believed that the PRC's approach to the two Michaels was wrong and lacking justification. Is that or might that have been something that you said in a conversation with the Consul General? It could be. Okay, so I was actually wrong. It was six for six <laughs> before. So now we're on point seven. Um, so seven for seven. Canadians believe that Canada was merely fulfilling its legal obligation in relation to Meng Wanzhou, Chief Financial Officer for Huawei. I, I don't remember that, but uh, possible. Eight for eight, folks. Notice a trend here. And again, he's not confirming nor denying. Right, but he's saying so that's possible, possible that yeah. that's something I would say. Okay. Number four, more precisely, MP Dong's reference to the detention of the two Michaels came in the context of MP Dong noting the difficulty of getting people to change perspective once particular positions solidified. I'm going to keep going because that seems a little general. Yeah. MP Dong expressed the view that even if the PRC released the two Michaels at that moment, opposition parties would view the PRC's action as an affirmation of the effectiveness of a hardline Canadian approach to the PRC. Is that something you recall saying or think you might have said? Or? Uh, I'm trying to translate this into Chinese and just don't make any sense. So I. Uh, not sure. I don't remember. I, but it doesn't make make a lot of sense here okay. when it I did, read this right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense in in what way? Well, I think I think uh, you know. Whenever I talk to about the two Michaels, um, I I'll make um, I'll, I'll try to show that you know early release of the two Michaels is is good for the relationship uh, between the two countries. Therefore, it's. Uh, something that um, a Chinese Canadian community would like to see. So I, I but I'm a little confused by the, um, by the information here. I don't quite get the logic here. That's so weird to me. If you never said that, why wouldn't you be like, no, I never said that. So let me clarify. This is the point in which he's suing Global News, everybody. Because, and this is actually great because all we received in the original article from Global News was that the intelligence stated that um, if they held on to the, if he, he said, if they held on to the two Michaels longer, the, it would injure the conservatives and be a benefit to the liberals. And why is that? Because, because if, the, if, if China had released the two Michaels early, then what he's saying is that would be viewed as a hard line approach, meaning Canada saying you will do this and you will do it now, meaning Canada stands has a perception of standing up to China. Well, and if they do it once, they'll do it again. Right. So the argument is that Han Dong said to the uh, said to the consulate, hold on to them a bit longer because then it will it will be more of a liberal victory than a conservative victory if that makes any sense to everybody now he goes on to say that doesn't make any sense because i'm trying to try and translate it into chinese why and you may think why is he trying to translate into chinese he's probably trying to do that i don't want to say tr translate into chinese translate into mandarin because chinese is mandarin cantonese and a whole bunch of other uh uh, dialects, but the main two are Cantonese and, and Mandarin. So he's trying to tr translate it into Mandarin. I'm guessing. So he's trying to remember in Mandarin what he said, and if he said that. That's that's my guess here. 
Well, to be fair, there can be some nuances between, you know, different languages. but Especially um, Mandarin. Apparently, it's a very difficult language. Um, I don't know firsthand. But so maybe there's some weight to that. But I still get the feeling like you would know. No, I said absolutely nothing that was even remotely related to that. And that you'd be very adamant about that, not that, oh, well, you know, I'm trying to translate it into a different language to see if maybe that's what I said. Right, because here's the issue. A lot of this has been kind of agreed to, like, this isn't this isn't a forklift out of the intelligence document into this document. What this is, is kind of an agreed upon interpretation between CSIS, the Privy Council Office, and a few other parties in order to make it into the public inquiry. So unless it's in quotes, then this may not be exactly what was said. Is it, is it, uh, it might be hard to. It is perhaps difficult to interpret exactly what you mean by the resume, I appreciate. But what is written here. So, for the record, I think the Inquisitor actually hit the, uh, the wrong button. So, now, or somebody did. Now we're getting the translator feed, it, it, it flips back. Is it you judge that it's. Ça s'aligne ou ça ne s'aligne pas avec les sentiments que vous... I'm not sure. It doesn't... It... Like I said, I don't remember, but it... it... I mean, the, the, the logic here kind of doesn't add up for me. Okay. Yeah. Point five, MP Dong stressed that any transparency provided by the PRC in relation to the two Michaels, such as a court hearing or a court date, would help to placate Canadian public opinion and provide some valuable talking points to his own political party against the opposition. So same question, is that something you recall saying or you think you might have said? Um, the, the, the first half of the, the, the sentence, uh, you know, stressed the transparency, um, such a court hearing and date, and I, I, I think it's possible that I would uh, advocate for that. Um, and I'm not sure about the second part. I'm not sure. So the second half says that would help to placate the Canadian public opinion and provide some valuable talking points for the Liberals against the Conservatives. I'm not sure. Wow. Just saying, folks. We'll we'll give him, just for fairness, we'll give him the second part of number four. Right? But sorry. <laughs> Everything else up to now is a point against. Okay. In, in, can, you, can you help us out at all about the second part? In terms of whether that's something, if you don't recall, well, do, I do don't you, recall saying that. You don't recall saying that? Okay. okay. Number six, MP Dong also noted that a Canadian hardline approach to the PRC would be detrimental to the Sino-Canada, to Sino-Canada relations. Well, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't recall saying that exactly, right, but it's possible. Okay. So it's possible he said number six. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have to go back to the second part of number four. Opposition parties would view the PRC's action as an affirmation of the effectiveness of a hardline Canadian approach to the PRC. Which he's saying in number six, it's possible that he said is detrimental to the relations between Canada and China. Just saying. Where's the lawsuit, Hong Dong? Where's the, I didn't say this, I didn't say this, I didn't say this, and I didn't say this. Now, is it possible that the reason why he's not saying that is because a lot of this information came from, oh, I don't know, wiretaps? came from listening devices, came from other means that CSIS uses to gather intelligence from, from people? Don't know. Probably. Otherwise, otherwise, like, what, you think CSIS is just making this stuff up? 
I'm pretty sure that they're in the business of not making stuff up. Pretty sure. So, Fox, how do you think Han Dong did? Very, very bad. Very bad. Yeah, I don't think... Um... I don't think he came off as credible at all. I think whether he was or not is kind of irrelevant at this point. It looks like he was lying. It sounded like he was lying. Yeah, the the really long pauses. Um, I can understand pausing to think about your answer, but um, like a pausing about you know when did you when did you notify the commission about another bus, and you take like a good ten seconds. Oh, uh, recently was it yesterday? Oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And, and come then, on. Like, you know, after sitting there listening to the Inquisitor go on for a bit, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, can we go back to, uh, you know, that thing that we were talking about five minutes ago? Yeah, my first answer made me look really bad, so I want to try and clean that up, which is going to make me look even worse. And his, his lawyer's probably sitting there going, oh, my goodness gracious. And then he was given contradictory answers. Yep. Like, just the whole thing came off like he was trying to hide something or... Just that he was not a credible witness. Well, and here's the thing. Global News is rubbing their hands together on this one. Oh, for sure. Because, because they he just completely screwed his whole lawsuit against them. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is, again, public record. And all they have to do, if it makes it to court, which I don't think it will now, but if this lawsuit makes it to court, all they have to do is throw in the tape and be like, well, he didn't deny it here, so... Yeah, so there you go. Fair game. Fair game. Because what Global News is reporting is intelligence sources say this. Which is true. Intelligence and, sources did say that. And the public inquiry, he was asked, what do you think about the truthfulness of these statements? Oh, it's possible. Okay, then. So if it's possible, then what's your lawsuit against Global News? It's nothing. But I think this really shows how our political system can be exploited by bad actors because there's a lot of truths in there. Like, um, for example, you do need people in your writing if you're running for a uh, nomination. You do need people in your writing to join the party which you belong and also to vote for you in, in the primary. Um, so that's accurate. And then... You do need a lot of volunteers. Um, when Cypher was looking at running, he was told he needed 50 plus volunteers. And that's just for the nomination. That's not even the election. So, um, like, there, there are truths to it. But then that was very obviously exploited by bad actors in this case, where they were using high school students who it sounds like weren't even citizens of Canada who it sounds like didn't even speak English to vote, like to join the Liberal Party and then vote in the primary. Right, to influence who a candidate is going to be in a federal election where, you know, their whole point of being in Canada, the federal candidate has no jurisdiction to influence whatsoever. Because, again, some writings are almost always red or almost always blue or almost always orange or, or in Quebec, they're almost always block, right? So if you know that writing is pretty much guaranteed to be liberal or guaranteed to be conservative, etc., as long as your man is the one running for that party, they're going to be the one with the seat in Ottawa. And that's the problem. Well, and the great thing about Don Valley North, which always, always has been read, is the Conservatives are starting to give them a run for their money. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what happened today um, when it came to Han Dong. Now, this was just the first person who had questions for him. Uh, there was other questions, but this was the part that really, really blew us away because, as we said in the beginning, he better have a real good lawyer.